Now, now Coasters, look, uh, my pleasure today to be on uh, the fishing vessel Resolution 2. Yep. And uh, I'm with Chase, who's one of the youngest skippers in the country. Um, <laughs> Not now. Is, is there someone, someone younger <laughs> coming? Oh, no, there's plenty of young ones around. It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> uh, Chase, how, how did you start? Did you come from a fishing family? Um, not originally, no. Dad, Dad was in the industry. He uh, worked in the office at Tally's for years. Yeah. Um, but no, aside from that, I haven't had no other family members. Ever. So did you start as a deckhand? How did, how did you start? Uh, yeah, I started uh, doing some scallops and oysters in Tasman Bay for a couple of smaller boats and then eventually got offered the chance to jump on here for a hokey season as a boy doing some ice and uh, did that for the school holidays and enjoyed it and then sort of just come back from then, finished school and came back. And so how does a young, because you, you're not that old, are you? How old are you? I'm 27 now. Oh, jeez, you are getting on. <laughs> yeah. Holy mackerel. Nah. Now, how, does, how does a young fella get to become a skipper? I mean, this is a big boat. How long's the resolution? Uh, we're just under 28 metres. And how, how heavy? Uh, we're 140 tonne. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's a big boat. Yep, she's all alloy, so it's not as heavy as some of the size, but it's pretty big. Yeah. So how did how did you get to become the skipper? What's what's the process? Uh, you, you start out on deck, obviously, just crewing. Um, and then just progress through your tickets as they as they pop up as you acquire your seat on. Yeah. And then yeah, just eventually got given an opportunity once one of the uh, other skippers on here he moved up to one of the company's other boats, so it left a bit of an opening and stepped into it from there. So the process is pretty important, isn't it? Yeah. Pro- you, you know, yeah. Yep. So uh, obviously you want to do it the shortest way possible. Yep. So you've got to require your sea time to do whatever ticket you require and then um, obviously so, go to school and set the ticket from there. So Chase, did you go to the, say the Westport School of Fishing or any of those? Uh, no, I did it at uh, Polytech in NMIT in Nelson, so oh. there's a maritime school there. Good good place it. to be too, just quietly. Yeah. Oh, close, close to home too. So. Oh, I so see you're yeah. a Nelson boy? Um, yeah, model acre. Fantastic. Yep. Well, it's the home of fishing, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, well, for tallies it is. Yeah. Well, you know, tallies has been a big part of fishing. Yep. I mean, take tallies and West Fleet here, where yep. the, the employment they offer in our, on our West Coast region, massive, yep. just massive. How many guys work on this boat? Uh, so we've got uh, the skipper and four crew at the moment. So in hokey season, we uh, take a couple of extras just to help out because of the volume, but usually we've just got uh, four crew. Now tell me, uh, I've spent a bit of time down the tip head and I've, I've filmed uh, the odd boat going out. I did the uh, Galatea on uh, Sunday. Yep. Um, I've got to, is it as, what's it like? Is it as bad as what I'm sitting on? I'm, my legs were shaking uh, sitting on the on, on the side. Uh, it's not as bad. When you, the more you do it, obviously the more natural it becomes. But yeah, I don't think you ever, you never get fully used to it, some of the rough crossings and that, you're sort of always on edge and that, but we're just trying to manage that, if it's too rough we just don't go out, pretty much. So listening to a lot of the older fishermen, they tell me that uh, 10 years ago there was a fantastic season, they seem to think that this season's been pretty pretty jolly good. Uh, yep, yeah, well fishing all year for us has been pretty good this year, um, we spent the first few months in Timaru and we had a fairly, fairly good season down there and then Hokie over this side has been pretty pretty consistent too. Yep. We, haven't, we haven't really struggled to catch fish at all so yeah it's been good. So when when uh, the processor that you, you, you uh, unload to, what does he do? Does he place an order and you know, what do you know, are you just fishing for anything or are you going specifically for something? No, at, like when we're doing hokey, we're specifically targeting hokey. Yeah. And then um, through other stages of the year, you've obviously got your, your quota plan, which is attached to your boat. So you're working towards that. So we just try to get the right mix each week to chip away at that quota so we're not just catching one species at a time. So it's been a pretty good hokey season? Yep. Yeah, it's been a pretty good hokey season for us. Well, for everyone, I think. Everyone's sort of caught fish pretty easily. So yeah. Now tell good. me, when you're out at sea, you must get the odd day that's fantastic. Yep. Yeah, you get some cool days. 
we've had pretty good weather just this last week. It's been nice. So yeah, it's been you do get some nice days. What what's you, you fish for hokey and then you go looking for something else? How do you find them? Um, well, you don't always. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose it's just uh, catch history and that, what, what you've done in the past and where you know where to find certain species at what time and what depths. And so the depths are important? Depths are important. Um, temperature has some has a bit to do with it sometimes. Um, yeah, it's more just a history of knowing what where you've caught stuff previously at what set of times and all your moon phases and tides affect it as well. So and that all becomes part of it? Yeah, it all, it all affects it in certain ways. So, yeah, it's just sort of correlating all of that together to find what find what you're after. And so that's the skipper's job, isn't it? Well, yeah, essentially. So when there's nothing around, it's the skipper's fault? It pretty much, yeah. <laughs> now, tell me, you know, we, we, often hear, we often hear stories, the negative stories about the fishing sector and, and a bit frustrating for many of us that know a bit about it. Yep. Um, you know, I was really surprised to hear that there hasn't been a dolphin you know, netted on the coast here for for uh, well over a decade. Yeah, In fact, I can't I'd find be, anyone who's ever... No, I'd be surprised. They, they, yeah, they're, just, they're too intelligent, I think, dolphins. So they're fairly switched on sort of animals. So, we, yeah, we don't have any issues with dolphins whatsoever at the moment. It's, freaking, it's good. Yeah. Now, tell me, uh, you ever sunk a boat? <laughs> yes. Have you? Yeah. You're, the, a, you're my first one. A, was it, a, was recre it? a recreational boat. <laughs> sunk, a, sunk, a, sunk a jet boat when I was younger. <laughs> and that's the best you could do. That's the best I could do. That's, that's the best I want to do. What sort of, what sort of jet boat? Uh, it was a little Colorado Hamilton jet boat. So. And what, did you hit something? Uh, yeah, hit a rock. Yeah, no, look, <laughs> look I had an aluminium one for, uh, for a number of years and uh, I've done it twice. Yeah. And it's, pr it's pretty embarrassing, isn't it? Yeah. It's it's just the uh, just there it goes. What about uh, you know when I look out on the deck out there, I, I wonder how the how the crew don't fall overboard. Is it is it you know? Oh, you get used to it. We we the crew will wear life vests and hard hats when we're shooting and hauling and that. It's all just standard, just standard health and safety protocol now. Like um, even coming in and out of the bars, um, tellies have got company policy that everyone wears life jackets now. Like, yep after incidents in the past and that it's just a, it's a no-brainer not to really with the uh the quota system um you know there's there's always lots of discussion as to whether the number of fish are going up or down or whether it's being managed sustainably yep. hearing some good things is the quota system working well yeah in certain areas it is like uh it's like everything it needs to be adjusted in, in other areas certain species are booming so the TAC could probably be lifted for certain things, whereas other things probably aren't as good as what they could be. So you sort of need to drop that. So yeah, it's just how it, it's more or less how it's managed is um, what's the important part about it. But it's it's definitely working. And so does the the feed when a when a species is booming, how do the people who make the decisions know that they're booming? Um, it's based on trawl science, and um, they have got a couple of research boats, so they do it, and then obviously based on um, commercial catch history and that, they base it on that as well. So so on board here, do you have um, observers that come out, that go out with you every now and then? Yep, yeah we had an observer um, come out with us just recently, uh, about a month ago, he came and did two weeks with us through the hokey season and they're uh, just recording uh, what spawn state the hokey are in and um, monitoring bird numbers, bird counts, any um, any bycatch and that, and they all record. So do, oh, well, we do too, but they're just making sure that everything all lines matches, up together. Everything lines up, yeah. And and uh, from a from a practical point of view, do you, do you put them to work? Because they get a bit bored, uh, don't they? <laughs> yeah, they, oh, they <laughs> cook and clean and that sort of thing. The, the guy we had this year was pretty good. So yeah, like, it's all about personalities. Yeah, isn't yeah, it? yeah. yeah. If they get on, they get on all right. So now you married? No. You you you, uh, you got a partner? Yeah, I got a partner back in Morocco. What's she like? Oh, she's good. She's a nice girl. Yeah, yeah. Put it on the spot there. Oh no, I just nah, thought I just good. just thought I'd ask because yeah. I mean, hey, skip skipper of a of a pretty big fishing boat and uh, young man, you know, just <laughs> generally what happens is a young lady comes along and uh, she's all go. Yeah, no, she's pretty good. She um, it's a bit hard being away um, at times, but yeah, we don't have any kids or anything like that, so it's plenty of time. Yeah, there's no uh, 
no pressure like that on it, so it's good. So when you when you go out to sea, how often are, are you away? Uh, me and the other skipper on here, we do generally two weeks about, so I'll take it out for two weeks and then swap and have two weeks off. Okay. That, so yeah, it's a pretty good roster, you get plenty of time off. So you get two, two full weeks off? Two full weeks off, yeah, I'm jumping off today, so... And it, uh, so from a from a maintenance point of view, do fishing boats break down like everything else we drive does? Oh yeah, definitely. Yep. And is that? Uh, it's, it's all about yeah. It's that's all relevant to how well things are upkept, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. If you keep on top of things, then they obviously break down less. But yeah, we um, we try to keep everything sort of up, up tip top on here at the moment. So well, you can only go to a certain point, can't you? Because if you pour diesel into it. At some stage, it's going to let you down. Yeah, yeah, well, that's right. You just try to uh, minimise minimise any of your uh, breakdowns because they just essentially cost you money, not so much in the repairs, but more just loss of fishing well, time as well. Yeah, is where the cost is. Yeah. Now, now tell me if you were um, if you were giving some advice to a young fella, and I actually can't think of anyone better than you that could do it, simply because yeah. you, you know you are a young fella. Yeah. And. And he wanted to start fishing. Let's say he's sixteen or seventeen. How's he going to get into it? Um, well, we've got uh, Amy's obviously trying to set up a bit of a recruitment um, tool at the moment because there hasn't really been a lot of pathways into the inshore fleet. Most of them are more directed towards the deep sea vessels, yep. especially in terms of tallies. So yeah, they're trying to set up a bit of a um, just a recruitment agency just to sort of try to keep get young people interested into it and show them that there is a pathway like it's not to someone that's never done it it's not a very obvious visible pathway but it's definitely there and it's what's what's the money like for a deckhand can he live <laughs> yeah no they do all right they do pretty good yep yep they do good. so does a young fella start off as a i mean clearly you you went on a boat and uh did the the packing the ice and all the rest of it yeah what what's uh, when a young man starts on on your boat here what's he going to do uh, they, they do everything right, right from the start, pretty much. So we obviously it's all on on job training. Like you don't necessarily have to have any experience in fishing. All of that just comes. To, it's like any job, I suppose. You learn yeah. it. You learn it on on site. But um, they they'll do everything right from um, certain species and that we we cut and process on board into a certain state, and they'll do that right through to fixing nets and changing wires and right through if they want to go into the engineering side of it into the engine room maintenance and yeah they get, there's definitely pathways to all of that i was uh, i was really surprised about the number of jobs there are off the boat yeah in in processing yeah yeah um in oh, sh and fish a, retail there's a big flow on effect yeah it's it's quite massive in fact uh, I, I read a report this morning and because I, I i thought i need to find out who chased this so i did a bit of a google now you're 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 already a uh, an internet hero uh, in your own right. And that was a few cheers, years ago. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> so yeah, that was back when I was I was still at school then. So was, even that was that was outstanding. Yeah, that was quite outstanding. And so you know you, you go and have a look at all these uh, these flow on effects. And this report I read said that for every person you've got on the boat, it's worth two point seven people in the community. Yep. So that's how many jobs it creates, and that's not just processing no, no, so the process you got to add the processing on top of that no, that's everything it's unloaders it's truck drivers um, all of our nets there's net net makers and all of the wire ropes and everything needs to be they've got to come from somewhere so yeah yeah there's a there's a huge industry there right back to and it all starts with just crew on deck cutting fish really oh, yeah it's a, it's it's a, it's a real primary industry yeah, yeah. isn't it yep and and fantastic for the coast i mean the uh, the dollars that the fishing sector brings in, really exciting. Yeah. Now tell me the um, the new uh, slipway the 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 dredge. Yep. Um, they tell me that the, the slipway is going to be able to take a 200 ton boat. Yeah. And 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 it's going to be undercover. Yep. Pretty exciting. Oh, it is for the coast. I mean, it'll bring a lot more business here in terms of that. Quite limited at the moment with the size of it. They can only get certain vessels on there. But yeah, I think that'll that, and that'll generate. Like you say, the flow on effect. There'll be a lot of jobs that'll come from that. So when when you fuel up with uh, with diesel here, how much do you put on? Put in uh, today we took about eight thousand liters. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's a fairly, fairly big amount. <laughs> Should be over my fuel card, yeah. Really. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's, it's quite a lot, isn't it? Yep. And is that so? That, that's so that'll be full now. Ah, uh, yeah, very, very close to. Yep. When's the next trip? When the next skipper takes uh, off? Where's he off to? Yeah, the boat will sail again today, probably this afternoon on the high tide, I imagine. Yeah. And um, he'll be due back in here in about uh, five or six days' time, hopefully, with another load on. And what's he chasing? Uh, at the moment, we're chasing a mixture of species: um, bling, stargazer, terakee. What's a stargazer? Uh, monkfish. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, nice day. Yep. So um, it's all just a mixed, mixed inshore bag at the moment. We're bottom, back bottom trawling, so yeah, they'll be targeting various species. Well, coasters, I'm on the resolution too with uh, Chase. He's he's not the youngest skipper in New Zealand now, but he certainly, uh, my understanding is, he certainly was. It's in charge of a. Uh, that's a pretty sizable boat. Uh, Chase, any chance of just having a look around and, and showing us what the boat looks like? Yep, yeah, we can take you for a look. That'd be awesome.